Today we're checking out Pre-Alpha 27 of Putter Island. You might notice right away compared to previous builds, we have a new menu screen. Uh, in the past this was just a white box, now we have uh, some artwork. A hover truck, a little island, some cargo and a tree, as well as some sequencer animation on top of it to make it a little bit more interesting. On the main menu we have a few more options in our options screen. We can actually uh, change some sound options now. We can change the volume uh, overall, as well as the volume of uh, individual uh, components of the sound mix. So sound effects, music, and voice. Um, you can adjust those uh, to your liking. We also have some new graphical options. You can switch between uh, windowed, full screen, or even a borderless full screen. Uh, you can also change uh, the resolution to something other than your monitor's native resolution. Here I am at the start of a new game. Uh, now there's a tutorial system that will uh, walk you through learning how to play. So walking into my house here, I uh, get a pop-up to grab a piece of cargo, look at it and press A. That tells me to pick up this piece of cargo here. I get some information about cargo. Um, and I intentionally made it so that in front of you is your truck. So that instinctively you want to go towards the truck. At first this window wasn't here and, and it was very frustrating. I didn't want to go towards the truck. Uh, people didn't want to do that when they were playing. The addition of that window really changed things. It's amazing what you learn uh, over the course of game development. Another change here um, to the UI is, uh, is the crosshair. The crosshair is now uh, looks a bit more like a traditional crosshair. It's gray, but uh, it, it changes color depending on the context. If I look at the, uh, at the box here, it turns yellow. If I pick the box up, the crosshair actually turns green. Putting the box down here for a moment. If I look at my truck, uh, which is locked at the moment, it actually turns the crosshair red. Uh, it's nice. It, it tells me whether or not I can get in the truck. Another thing that I've added here, just a, a nice general uh, change, is when you're manipulating the cargo, not only can you uh, twist it in these ways that you could before, now you can actually bring it closer and, and further away from you. This makes loading the truck up uh, much, much easier. Now that I've loaded the truck, I get another tutorial and, uh, and now the truck is actually unlocked uh, based on completing that tutorial. This is uh, some good information for new players. Um, if you haven't played the game before, uh, you should be able to jump in now without, uh, you know, having seen these videos or without having me, uh, you know, there to explain it for you. One location I've added to this build is uh, the gear shop. This is where you can buy a uh, tool upgrades or uh, just new tools. So uh, in this case, I'm going to go in and buy uh, whatever I can. Uh, we can buy uh, the muscle gun, which you've seen before, and we can buy the vac blower, which is all new. You can also buy uh, some, some ammo, some more rope uh, for uh, your rope gun or some more muscle for your muscle gun. Now, uh, from my radial menu here, I can choose my uh, rope gun, muscle gun, or vac blower. The vac blower, as the name suggests, is a combination blower and vacuum. It lets you uh, move a bunch of cargo actors at once. So if I blow here, I can push all this cargo around. I can also uh, suck it towards me. See that some of the heavier uh, cargo objects are harder to move, uh, but they move. Another new location in this build is the Fry Bus. If you've ever been to Northern Ontario, you'd know these things are pretty much everywhere. People want to get a Putin and a Pogo wherever they're at, and uh, Fry Buses seem to be the way that people get that done. So I've wanted to recreate that magic, and I've added one here. We've got a fry bus, we've got a nice deck, we've got some tables. 
What's interesting about the Fry Bus is that it generates shipping orders uh, that have a time limit. If you go over, the item is considered late and there is a payment penalty for it. There's also uh, some uh, additional payments made if you, uh, if you get the item there early. I've also changed orders so that now they can uh, be generated pretty much anywhere, um, including at residents' houses. So if you uh, finish delivering, say, five deliveries to somebody way out in the sticks, and, uh, and then your truck's empty, you might be able to grab an order from that person's terminal. It's probably just going to be a few empty boxes heading back to a distribution center, but it gives you something to do in that time. There have been some changes to trading as well in this build. If I go into my uh, trading tab and go to the store inventories page, um, you can see now that uh, each cargo item here at Outpost Alpha, it has its stock level and then its price. Uh, in the last build, I had a buy price and a sell price, which made things very confusing. Um, and it made buy back and sell back kind of a, a pain in the arse. So I've, uh, I've taken care of that with this uh, unified uh, price. It's a lot simpler now and it makes a lot more sense. I've also added a lot more variety to, uh, to the cargo in this build. Uh, here we have some fruit. Uh, that was in the, in the game before, but now it just looks a little bit more interesting. Same with the wood. We have crates of various sizes. And these crates actually have these sort of offset slats on the top of bottom and the bottom that allow you to, uh, to stack them. Even though they're of different sizes, they're still compatible with each other. In this sort of a scenario, you could, in theory, uh, rope down only the top box, and it should secure the ones below it as well. We also have some cylinders of various sizes for carrying liquids, as well as, uh, as, well as just some more simple cardboard boxes. And with that, I finished showing off uh, Pre-Alpha 27. That's it for Pre-Alpha. Really, this is uh, Alpha Candidate 1. I'm just going to put it out for some testing. People are going to play it for a bit, and uh, depending on what bugs, fixes I need to make, and what changes could be made, uh, that's it. We're calling it Alpha 1, and I'm going to start uh, trying to show this off to people. Very exciting. Thanks for watching, and thank you to everybody who's been doing the testing. Uh, you all know who you are. I'm not going to necessarily identify you in public. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Anyway, thanks. Bye-bye.